All right, 5G and coffee, Cradle Point Hardware 101. This is an exciting one. Um, we've actually, uh, Kevin and I both just met Anthony uh, recently, and uh, we're uh, we're looking forward to this. This is a, we'll be taking a deep dive into uh, the 5G hardware for Cradle Point that is on the market today. Uh, you know, our speakers are, are pretty fantastic and they know their stuff, right? So uh, with that being said, We'll move into uh, to introductions. Uh, I'm Mark Indelicato, Content Marketing Specialist here at RCN and your host for today. Uh, as I just mentioned, we're joined by Kevin Flores and Anthony Lawson. Kevin is a Tier 2 Support Engineer here at RCN Technologies, and Anthony is the Director of Technical Product Management over at Cradle Point. Did I miss anything? Did I, did I get your guys' titles right? Spot That's on, it. Mark. Awesome. The only thing... The only thing I learned is my headshot needs to be updated from the chest up. So I noticed that there's a, there's not a parody there in the headshots. I got to work on that. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's yeah. All right, man. At the very least, that beard is on point though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It just, is. Uh, <laughs> quick, yeah. Funny, funny note of, of the many nicknames I have here at Credit Point. One of them is the elastic wide beard, which is a, a funny play on the marketing term, right? We use that elastic wide band. Oh, yeah. and they say this is the elastic white beard. <laughs> oh, I need to just make that as your, your title for the next one. Do it. So uh, there's obviously a lot of marketing terminology that exists out there around 5G because there's a lot of marketing efforts. And every marketing department will try to put their own slight spin on it to, you know, to stand out in the crowd, right? I mean, that's just that's just marketing 101 and that's them doing their job. In general, what we've kind of landed on that has a lot of industry uh, parity with other with other uh, bodies is the the concept of 5G is a layer cake. And within that layer cake, there's three basic breakdowns of the spectrum. And so there, there's 5G low band, which we also call coverage layer. There's 5G mid band, which we call capacity layer. And thanks for the slide. I was reading all this off the top of my head, but keep me honest here. And then... <laughs> There's the uh, 5G high band, which is also called the high capacity layer. Now, each one of these um, mainly has six other different marketing names that you could see floating around out, out there in the in the in the wild in the world. But this is kind of what we've anchored <clears throat> all of our literature, our marketing literature, our technical documentation, our training, um, our presentations to customers. We 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 solidified on this terminology. Cool. Yeah, um, let's see. Well, I'll move on to uh, to this next slide, and we can just kind of do a brief, um, you know, kind of overview of these of the differences here. But yeah, um, yeah, Kevin or uh, or Anthony, you kind of just want to touch on on what this uh, graph is showing, real quick. Kevin, do you have a do you have some comments? You want to lead the conversation on that one? Some yeah. thoughts? Uh, sure. Um, so, I mean, one of the things with five G is, I mean, it's I mean, it's not too dissimilar from something like LTE. I mean, it's just, it's kind of one of those things where it's more than just like speed. I mean, you're looking at, it's gonna extend things like your IOT coverage, so you have more reach. Uh, with more reach, more speed, you're looking at the better ability to compute. You're looking at better storage. Uh, you're looking at the potential for things like network slicing, which is where you like layer logical networks on top of like a physical one. Um, so, I mean, these are all things that you're gonna be able to do in a, in a in a much more capable fashion. Uh, same thing with like edge computing, it's, you know, things like that. And these are all things, even as you're looking at the, um, you know, at, at the graph here, you can see the high capacity layer where it kind of shows, um, you know, things that would be good use cases for it. And, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it makes our ability to do all these different things just so much better, so much more efficient, you know? Yeah, and one thing I'd like to add, uh, if you don't care, real quick, is uh, it's it's really interesting, and this is uh, it it sort of complicates it a little bit compared to LTE. Um, but this is, I would make the argument that it five G is much better suited for business applications because uh, you know uh, getting a high capacity um, or high band implementation might be a lot more challenging uh, for or it's definitely gonna be more challenging for, for rural applications, but you can still have 5G, still get a lot of the benefits um, that 5G brings even out in, in rural areas just with the, the low band 5G. So it's it's kind of like, uh, it's a little more shopping, right? Whereas LTE was, you know, one size fits all. This is, you know, you might, you, you gotta pick what, what makes the most sense for your for your business or your organization. Yeah, and I think that's- Mark, we, uh, Mark, we call that find your 5G, 
right? And and so if you don't if you don't mind, Kevin, I I'll jump in. I, I echo everything you said, by the way, all all of your points, um, one hundred percent. The the thing I'd like to kind of layer on top here is the title of this is LT versus five G, and I'd actually kind of argue that it's not really LT versus five G; it's LT and five G. And here's why. And and this is a lot of the the talk track that I deliver when I when I talk to this slide with customer presentations is. Notice how the largest blue circle in this layer cake, aka the coverage layer, notice how gigabit LT and then all the traditional 4G LT, so that'd be LT Advanced, LT Advanced Pro, all the LT technologies that we know today, they join low band 5G in that in that coverage layer, that, that biggest spectrum layer. The big point there is that 5G is not replacing 4G or LT. All right. So LT or 4G replace 3G, that's not the case in this evolution. These two are going to live in parallel for probably at least the next decade, if not longer. And so it is definitely going to be a world of LT and 5G for, for a long time. Now, as you move to the center, right, that becomes pure 5G new, new territory, if you will. New territory that did not exist until 5G came on the market. So if your business application, you want to take advantage of those high speeds, lower latencies that Kevin talked about uh, a minute ago, you'll move into the capacity layer and then move into the high capacity layer, which is 100% 5G only territory. But to your point, Mark, a lot of the customers that are in rural areas that, that don't yet have access to 5G coverage area, they'll be in that coverage area, that coverage layer with traditional LTE products for several years. And that's totally fine and expected. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as well. And then the final point is every organization out there will more than likely be a hybrid, meaning they won't subscribe all of their fleet, all of their devices, all of their branch locations it's almost guaranteed that they will not live 100% in one of these layers. And that's by design okay. Meaning their environment, their, their deployment will be a little bit of coverage, a little bit of capacity, a little bit of high capacity. A, where it's available. B, where it makes sense, right? Because again, find your 5G that maps to your use case. So when customers come to say, which 5G is right for me when they look at this picture, our immediate first response is, well, what is your use case? Let's talk about your use case. Let's break that down. And then let's map your use case to these three layers. And by the way, one of the layers is still LTE. That's just, just a matter of fact. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, it's, we're looking at what, 10 minutes past two now. I think this was a great intro to our, to our main segment, uh, sort of this product highlight uh, is what we'll be looking at. Um, yeah, and I guess without further ado, uh, we'll move into it. Uh, the way this is gonna work, we'll look at a few products and I'll pitch questions about these products, both Kevin and Anthony. Uh, if you guys in the audience have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A section in the sidebar and we'll get to them towards the end of the presentation. So uh, without further ado, let's look at the, uh, the R1900 first. So this is the R1900 here. Uh, we'll move into our first question. Uh, how does the R1900 Innovate Cradle Point's mobile series routers. So I'll put, pitch that to you, uh, Anthony, first, if you don't care. Uh, what's what's new here? What are we looking at? Well, I mean, the obvious mark right on the on the surface is it's it's Cradle Point's first uh, foray into a mobile in vehicle five G enabled router. So it is a purpose built from the ground up. We've been working on this program for a very long time. Um, it was all built from scratch with five G designed in mind. You know, so we started almost two years ago with this program knowing that 5G was gonna have an inflection point at this time for mobile applications, and we wanted to build a platform that's gonna deliver everything that the 5G network can deliver for mobile use cases. So that's first and foremost. The second is there was a lot of um, effort put into the form factor, the design of the unit um, to match um, the, the needs, the technical and physical needs of, of in-vehicle installation that was very highly taken into account in its design. And then the third thing I would say off the top of my head is that We've enabled some new uh, use cases. So in particular, we've added Bluetooth, low energy 5.1 to this platform. So there's uh, a Bluetooth radio receiver built into that, that that can enable Bluetooth applications. And then also we have a managed accessory that adds PoE ports, which is also a first. First for Carter Point and one of the first, I believe, in the marketplace to have an in-vehicle router with PoE on board to power things like IP PoE cameras, maybe in uh, mobile transit or other applications. We're seeing a lot of demand there. Okay. And so that, that's a couple just highlights off the top of my head um, mm -hmm. of what the R1800 is, is bringing to the market. That's awesome. Yeah, Kevin, uh, what do you have to, to add to that? I mean, uh, you know, I know you deal with a lot of mobile routers uh, in your day to day. So, I mean, what's, uh, what's a 5G router? Uh, what's that going to look like for, for some of the people watching here? 
Well, I'll say Anthony did a great job of covering a lot of the major points. Um, something I'd add is just the fact that most um, most routers like this have four antennas that they're going to share between two modems because this device actually does have dual modem connectivity, which is awesome because that gives you the opportunity for a better version of failover. It gives you uh, load balancing and things that you can't do on some of the smaller uh, cradle point devices, which I mean, are still great devices like an IBR 900. Love it, but you know it's only got the one modem in it. Um, but so with the with the R1900, this one's going to have four antennas per modem. So this should help ensure better performance, period, whenever you're trying to do something like load balancing or failover, whatever the case is. Um, so that's something that's going to be awesome. Um, and something to kind of add to what Anthony had mentioned is that this is, you know, this is your first purpose-built 5G router for vehicles. But, I mean, Cradle Point, they're not exactly new to 5G. They're not exactly new to... Um, you know, routers for vehicles. So, I mean, you're looking at a team that knows what they were doing when they did build this from the ground up. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. So, um, I guess that'll just pop us into our next question. Uh, why would an organization want to upgrade to a device like this? I mean, what are what are the benefits that uh, that organizations are going to see? And you know, what uh, you know, I guess if it might be difficult to do kind of a cost analysis, you know, on the spot. But like, uh, I mean. What's what's that look like, right? Is it is it pretty easy? Is it very very friendly for it? Um, and I'll I'll give this one to Kevin first, then I'll, then we'll go to Anthony. Um, I mean, something like this is just the case of just evolution, right? Uh, as as we continue to use these routers in vehicles, as we you know continue to use them for certain use cases, we learn from it. You know, oh, you know this you know this particular feature is going to be better than that feature. You know, oh, we need to improve speeds for this. We need to you know improve performance for that. So with the R1900 being built from the ground up just for, some, for something specifically like this, specifically with 5G in mind, it's just straight up forward thinking. So you, you can expect, you know, the industry standard that is Cradle Point just even better at this point. I mean, it, it's just, they're just going to continue to grow. Okay, right on. Anthony, what, uh, what do you have to add to that? Um, I, Kevin's done a, a fantastic job, Kevin. You, you're, you're hired, by the way, just so you know, your, your, your badge is, is waiting for you at the office yeah. when you're ready. <laughs> just FYI. Um, so the, my, my answer, a lot of it comes down to a lot of things we've talked about here, which is if you're, if your use case and, or your application, and especially in, in vehicle, um, uh, use cases demands more throughput, and lower latency, things that LTE have, have, have struggled to provide you, and, and if 5G is available to you, then that unlocks potentially new use cases that are mobile use cases that weren't, you know, uh, practical or, or tenable earlier with, with LTE. So that's one, of course. But the, I think the biggest thing that we're seeing right now in the market play out, and this is a lot of first responders, public sectors, a lot of the companies, agencies that buy these routers, both commercial and, and public sector, is it's a lot of future proofing. Right, so most of these organizations have a very long refresh cycle, right? They wanna put, they wanna invest in this device, this mobile vehicle router. They wanna put it in the vehicle and they wanna operate it for five, seven, 10 years. You know, they have a long refresh cycle on these type of devices. And so the way they're looking at it is that if they're at an installation point of a new vehicle right now, they wanna invest in a technology that has the most future proofing, the most longevity in its life cycle for both the device itself, but the type of carrier network offerings that it can subscribe to. And so we've even seen a lot of agencies and companies invest in the R1900 and say, I'm going to fully intend on using it with LTE for the next year or two because 5G is just not in my territory or my district yet. However, I know that's going to change within the life cycle of the investment of that product. I know within a couple of years, 5G will come to me just like LTE did in the past. And right. I don't want to have to rip and replace the device later to take advantage of 5G when it comes to my area or my district. And so investing now in, in something like the R1900 just keeps all those doors open and gives you all that investment protection. And that's, that's a lot of the sentiment we're seeing in the market uh, in early 2021. That's awesome. So it's, it's highly adaptable. And I would imagine sort of, you know, looking at that, uh, that ring graphic that we looked at a minute ago, you know, if this is a, a mobile router, there should be no issues, you know, driving through LTE, driving through low band, mid band, high band, whatever. So it's, it's, it's pretty adaptable in that, uh, in that aspect is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. So the R1900 is designed to take advantage of the low and mid band. So the coverage and capacity layers, it has okay. full technology to take advantage of that. And yes, uh, when if, if all of those connection types, all those cellular, what we call service types are available um, as the device transit between those, it will automatically transition between those. That's all handled at the modem level. That's awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah, Kevin, anything to add before we move on to the uh, the next product here? No, Anthony, that was beautifully worded, man. You got this. 
All right. All right. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just worried Kevin's going to take my job. So I'm just trying to hold up my own over here. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All right. So next, uh, next product that we're looking at is the W1850. Uh, very pretty device. I really like the white there. Um, so looking at this 1850, uh, is this a good solution for fixed wireless? I know this is uh, this is something that's that's coming up in popularity. Um, I know we've had uh, more and more calls just asking about it, inquiring about it. Uh, what do you what do you see in here? Uh, we'll start with Anthony again. Yeah. So the first thing I would note that uh, fixed wireless or FD, FWA is is kind of a term that's coming into a, into light recently in the last year or so. Right. But I want to point out that. It's nothing new per se. We've been doing it with, we've been doing fixed wireless access or FWA with LT for years and years. Mm -hmm. We just called it branch connectivity or branch continuity. Whether you're using the device to provide a backup connection to maybe a, a primary wired line, or if you're using it as the primary one and only connectivity, um, we just called that branch connectivity or branch continuity, right? And it, and it wasn't called FWA, but that's just a term that's starting to get a lot of traction, especially within the carriers and operators. Right. And so we're, we've adopted that. So I just want to point out, it's not the, that's not the new per se. Um, the W1850 is really the evolution of our longstanding, very, very popular CBA850. You know, so we've been selling that device for years. That was our mainstay uh, for an LT adapter to give connectivity. And that could actually be used as a failover connectivity or for a third party device that doesn't have native cellular ability. You could bolt it on and essentially adapt wireless to any third party product. And so it could be used in either of those two fashions or use cases, and it can be considered fixed wireless access for sure. And so the 1850 is the evolution of that. And so that is the latest and greatest Cat20 LTE modem. And so again, if a customer wants to, or, or only has available to them right now, LTE network access, they can invest in the 1850, get category 20 LTE Advanced Pro, which is really, really fast. And they'll actually see if LTE Advanced Pro is in their area, they'll see an increase in speed over the CAT-18 more than likely, which was our previous generation LT Advanced Pro product with the uh, the 1200 MB or the C18B modem that you saw from us. Okay. And then of course, it has 5G on board, just like the R1900, you got 5G on board. If 5G is in your area and your data plan supports access to it, then you'll go right on day one. Or again, it comes all down to that exact same investment play, everything I just talked about and articulated for mobile, that is kind of universal across the board. So it applies to branch and FWA. Uh, that having that investment protection is is key. Oh, awesome, Kevin. Uh, what do you got? Anything to add to that? Um, I don't have too much to add. Um, just kind of like like how Anthony said, it runs on like the Cat Twenty LTE, but it also runs on like load midband four five G. Um, so you can typically expect really good connectivity, speed, reliability, that kind of thing. Because I mean, that Cat Twenty LTE, it's basically just LTE, just you know, better, you know. Right. Um, and I mean, the 850 itself was already a really solid device. It's something that I've seen time and time and time again for failover. So, you know, the W1850, kind of like the R1900, is just cradle points, you know, learning from previous devices that were already very good and then improving upon them. So, like, for my anime lovers out there, this is basically a CB850 going Super Saiyan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, and actually, Mark, if I had one more detail, you made a comment about the white. And so you guys remember, we, we pioneered the white with the, with the 850. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I want to kind of point out, and this is something we want to reiterate now, even with 5G, it's even more important now in, in the 5G low and mid band is we pioneered the white because it looks kind of like a smoke detector or a motion detector or a wireless access point. It's mm -hmm. kind of designed to be in, inconspicuous that you could uh, get out of the data closet get in your office, get up or, or the front of your business, if you're a quick serve or retail location, get it up on the ceiling and it'll kind of blend into the ceiling with all the other devices that are already kind of peppered up there on the ceiling. But the key is you get it out of that data closet, which is usually buried in the back of the business. You get it to the front of your store, or the front of your branch office, whatever it may be. And you've got a way better chance of getting a really quality fidelity signal with cellular. And that will increase your cellular performance, increase your cellular experience, lower your latency, all those things will come with that. So the 1850, we put a lot of a lot of thought into the industrial design of that to maintain that kind of that low profile, low you know visibility white, so you can get it out of the closet and get it up on the ceiling where you're going to get a better experience. Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a great point. Oh, Kevin, you go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say actually, Anthony's absolutely right. Uh, we actually have a major customer. I don't know if I'm allowed to say who they are or not, 
Um, but they, they for their 850s that they had that they had bought, it's most of the ones that I've worked with. That's exactly where they put it. It's at the front of the store, above the door. It's very, it's very kind of subtle in its location, and it's what provides the best functionality. So yeah, Anthony, great, great expl yep. explanation of the use case. Yep, and and with 5G, guys, and everyone listening, that that story is going to get even more important. So 5G spectrum, the short is not to totally you know nerd out on spectrum for a minute, but the, sh yeah. the very short rule of thumb is. As the spectrum goes higher, so you go 600 megahertz, 1800 megahertz, gigahertz, and, and so forth up the stack, the challenges of propagation and penetration are, are dramatically worse. So getting through the building, getting through the building construction, even lightweight construction of wood and you know and, and sheetrock in a home is very challenging for when you get to the mid-band and higher in 5G signals. And so I think we're gonna see a, a to your to that uh, customer example you used, Kevin, I think we're gonna see a big adoption of getting the device, whether it's 4G or 5G, get it out of the closet and just simply locate it like you do with an access point, right? It's powered via PoE. And so the same tactic you take for access points, which almost exists in every one of these environments, just run another cat, whatever cable to the front of your store, hang it on the ceiling, just like an access point, And you're gonna immediately have a better experience. Yep, oh, absolutely, yeah. That's one of those things, you know, you never you never notice them until you do, right? So if there's a, a a black modem monitor mounted to the ceiling. You know, that typically sticks out like a sore thumb a lot of the time, but I, I like that uh, you guys designed the white with that in mind. And uh, just, you know, something that kind of pops into my head as you were talking about that, keeping with the example of retail, if you wanted to get like um, like Amazon's, uh, what was that store that they opened where, you know, there's no no transactions or anything, it yes. just, it, yeah, you, you pick it up off the yep. shelf and then it, it registers, right? So you're, you're definitely gonna need pretty good, uh, pretty good connectivity and pretty good line of sight to be able to do uh, implementations like that. And like you said, I can see a lot more, uh, especially people who are wanting to to make retail stores like that, uh, moving their, their technology outward. Uh, awesome, cool. Uh, so we'll get on to the next question here. Um, let's see, cast it. So what low and mid band currencies can customers expect from the W1850? And I know you guys kind of answered this a little bit in the last question, so. Um, Sorry for for doubling up here, but uh, what are the what are the benefits um, you know that that you can see from the W eighteen fifty? And if you want to you know pick a vertical uh, you know that's not retail, I guess since we already kind of covered that, uh, you know feel free. But uh, uh, let's see, who do we go first with last time, Anthony? I think Kevin, you wanna you wanna take this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so for something like this, kind of like Anthony mentioned earlier, it's really all going to come down to use case. So. As far as what a specific industry can expect, it depends on that industry and what that specific industry needs. But um, I mean, it's basically like pick your flavor. So you know, you know, kind of like as we mentioned earlier, find your five G, right? So you're gonna have certain devices where you know maybe all you need is low band, which you're looking at like I think it's like a gigahertz or less, something like that. Um, you know, you're gonna have use cases where you're looking at you know you know mid band, so that's you know your two point five to like six ish somewhere around there, and then once once you get to to your uh, your high band or the you know millimeter wave or high capacity layer, however you know, however you want to call it, you're looking at about six gigahertz and up. Um, so I mean that's just going to be one of those things where you know depending on what your use case is, you know maybe you need something that's going to have you know the three you know the, the throughput that a high capacity layer can provide, or maybe it's just something you know it's a it's a smaller case, you know whatever it's a device that only needs the low band, and so maybe you don't need the extra the extra thing because each one is going to have its pros and cons for things. You know, for something like 5G, it works amazingly well, but it's for shorter distances. So you're going to need more um, of the little cellular antennas that they use to, you know, to put them up. And so for something like that, you need better line of sight for things. Whereas with something like LTE, that's a little bit more of spread out, more of like a, you know, if if 5G is 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 a laser, then LTE you can do like a flashlight. You know what I mean? So it covers a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anthony, uh, what do you got to add to that? Yeah, I think I think honestly, we've over the last couple of questions, we've really kind of covered all the different facets or angles to this. So I, I don't really have anything else to add at this point. If we want to maybe when Mark transition to the next one. Yeah, sounds good. So next one we're going to look at here. Let me uh, get my screen back up again. Uh, the E three thousand. This is a fun one. Um, this is one of the first products that I actually learned about. I started uh, RCN back in February, and I know uh, this was uh, there was a lot of hype here, but. Uh, so let's just read this. 5G optimized enterprise branch router delivers scalable performance and services for all wireless and hybrid wired networks. I know there's a lot going on here. Um, so we'll look at our first question. 
Uh, how is the E3000 positioned to be an all-in-one edge network solution? Uh, Anthony, if you want to kick us off here. Sure. And so one of the things I wanted to kind of start with is on that screenshot you had of the E3000 mm -hmm. on your guys' website, um, you had our label. We, this is another kind of quick terminology label is uh, 5G optimized. And so yeah. as you as you go through or navigate through our website, our marketing collateral, you're going to see three terms. You're going to see 5G ready, 5G optimized, and 5G embedded. And so I'll start with embedded. That one's a self-explanatory. So the R1900 we talked about, the W1850 we talked about, those are 5G embedded devices, meaning the modem that is embedded inside the device as you first receive it from Credit Point and RCN will include a 5G radio. That's just native embedded 5G. Now, 5G ready and optimized are two different labels we've been actually using for the last two years as part of our pathway to 5G message to say, join us on this journey, get a, you know, adopt wireless WAN and cellular today with LTE, and then we're gonna show you how you can get to 5G later, right, with these products. And then as part of that, part of that definition was to describe for these products that we applied the 5G ready and 5G optimized labels, what did that mean? Like what was the direct 5G upgrade path? And so there's kind of two parts of that. Um, the, the, the E3000, you, you noted, Mark, we, we announced that in March or April last year, so we've been shipping that one for over a year. And we shipped that with an embedded CAT 18, but we call that 5G optimized and the short meaning of that is that you'll be able to do two things with it. One, you'll be able to attach a 5G wideband adapter. The W1850 is one example, the W2005, the W4005 are two more examples. So be able to attach that adapter to the E3000. The E3000 has that two and a half gig port uh, multi-rate uh, WAN interface. And so that's gonna let us have all the throughput possible to even going up as much as the uh, W4005, which, for example, would use Verizon's ultra wideband millimeter wave network. That's the fastest 5G network that's available here in the United States and you know one of the fastest in the world. We wanna make sure that you get a pipe from that down to your E3000 and ultimately down to your application, your clients with no bottleneck or no throttle in between there, right? We're gonna take that all that 5G network experience and give it all the way down to your clients. So that in a nutshell is what we described as 5G optimized. It's the best possible upgrade path to 5G. Now with the latest May announcement, and kind of what you're heading to, is we announced there will be a revision of the, another SKU, if you will, a, a version of the E3000 that is also going to be 5G embedded. And so we'll end up with two SKUs. We'll have a LTE CAT 18, which is the one we've been selling for a little over a year, which is 5G optimized. And then we announced a new version that'll be available here shortly that'll be 5G embedded. And it'll have the same 5G modem as the R1800 and the W1850 we just talked about. Okay, excellent. Yeah, um, Kevin, what uh, what do you have to add to that? And apologize, the uh, the air conditioning decided to go on turbo mode over here. If you can hear that, so oh no worries. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I found another situation where you know Anthony covered the five G aspect of the E three thousand extremely well. Uh, I mean, basically, I mean, you're still looking at regular specs as far as like, is it a good solution for you know for for certain things? Absolutely. You know, because, you know, as you said, it's optimized for 5G. It's got your, your 9 gigabit Ether ports, you know, which is something that's, that, that's fantastic, especially if this is going to be your edge router or your primary router. You, know, you want to make sure that you have enough ports to connect all your different devices to make sure that you can actually build out your network the way you need it to. Um, you know, this is also another device that is going to have a dual modem so that you can set up things like load balancing and better failover, or I guess a more seamless failover versus something that's just going to be like dual SIM. Um, you know, one of the other cool functions with this is that, you know, you can use the remote connect. You don't even need the advanced license for something as big as the E3000, which I mean, as anybody who manages any kind of network can tell you remote management is such a big thing because, you know, some, you know, you, you don't typically expect issues with, with a device like the E3000, but if something were to happen, then, I mean, you're looking at, oh, you know, I need to send someone out to the site and then I got to wait and then, and then they got to get there and do troubleshooting. Whereas with remote management, you can sit there, do it on the spot. You can write, do everything through the cloud. It's, it's, it's just a it's a wonderful device, and the and the fact that it's now going to be not just five G optimized, but five G embedded, just makes a good device that much better. Yeah, that's awesome. And I actually was uh, curious about the the dis distinction between the two. So, um, like you said, that that you would think that would make it better, and I would imagine it would in in a lot of different deployments. Um, would it make sense? So, kind of how we were talking about with the high band before. So with it not wanting to permeate buildings and things like that and having trouble with it. Uh, I mean, you could mount a uh, an adapter outside and wire it straight to that inside, right? Like, is that is that 
you know one of the reasons why you would you would go that way with with that sort of purchase yeah so absolutely mark that's that's a good segue so the one of the things you guys will see in our portfolio of 5g adapters is for the first time in our in our history of a company we actually make outdoor versions and indoor versions and so previously all of our lt devices be it a router or an adapter to adapt wi-fi or a cellular to another product um, were all indoor they, they weren't designed to be mounted you know directly outdoor on the outside of the building in the direct elements and in inclement weather things like that and so for a lot of the reasons that we've kind of danced around and, and talked about these different spectrums and, the, and their ability for propagation, we recognize that in somewhere in that mid band is where it kind of comes to be subjective. And then the high band is a foregone conclusion. It has to be outdoor. Um, high band is 24 gigahertz and above. It can go as high as like 80 gigahertz. That, that type of millimeter wave or that sine wave style, it just is not gonna penetrate any kind of building construction whatsoever. It is effectively a open air line of sight, fixed wireless type installation. Um, for people who have been around, got gray hair like myself, think of old microwave point to point installations. It's kind of that same exact realm. Um, so we, we came out with the W4005, which, is, which by the way, can do all three spectrums. It could do low, mid and high. It could be installed in any of those, any of those environments but it's outdoor and it's the only one capable of high band because it's the only uh, outdoor device with that rating. Uh, we did also make a 2005 for the customers that want to go outdoor and get the best possible signal with say mid band, but don't want to invest in high band because there is a, a significant price delta. The, the price jump uh, to go from mid band to high band is very significant in this early technology that will, that will change over time as it matures and, and, and uh, from the vendors. But right now it's, We've got that delimination, but we've got options for both. So you can go a W1850 inbound, you know, indoors, low band and mid band, or you can go do 2005, low and mid outdoors, or 4005, all the above outdoors. And so we really have a full portfolio, right? We have a full menu of options for you. And so whatever, it, whatever suits your application, your business, your use case, your physical installation environment, um, where you're at in the cell coverage area, because again, you know, there's always the concept of, are you in the mid, near mid or uh, far or called cell edge? And if you're at the far cell edge, you're probably doing everything you can to kind of boost your experience. And so going outdoors is the first thing you could do to try to help that situation. Awesome, yeah, that was a, a great response to it. Uh, Kevin, do you have anything you can add to that or? Um, not much here. I, I, I will say I love how Anthony covered kind of the difference between like the indoor and the outdoor devices, especially as we move closer and closer to complete 5G rollout, you know, because I mean, kind of like I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, when you have 5G, you're going to get the best quality when you're closer to the tower, when you have direct line of sight, because that does, it has less of a range. So with it being outdoors, that's just, it's just the best place to put these devices. So I, I love that Cradle Point identified an issue and then created solutions to move in that direction to make sure that businesses can have the best possible performance out of their devices. So I, not much to add there, but I, I, I just love that, that differentiation between these cases. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, we're, we're wrapping up with this section. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any, any parting thoughts for any of those three uh, devices we just looked at. I believe it's uh, a mobile, mobile router in the R1900, uh, something that's uh, ideal for, for retail and, and small to medium-sized businesses in the W1850, and then uh, something just kind of for, for all levels, right, in the E3000, uh, or is that a little more enterprise um, a little enter enterprise aimed, or, or what does that look like? Uh, well, all of our products in general, right, Mark, are all, all enterprise targeted. I mean, that, that's, the, that's our target market segment, our target customer is, is anybody in the enterprise class um, uh, device and use case. 